All right, guys, we're diving Lauderdale by the Sea today, and there's enough things that I think if you're diving this or doing other similar shore dives that are kind of weird and uh, logistical that you have to figure out. So I'm going to show you guys. So we're in like, you know, standard public beach parking. All the parking spots are taken. So we're going to set up our equipment, load up the car with everything we don't need. Jillian's going to go find a parking spot somewhere, walk back. I'll be with the gear here and then we're going to go and get in the water. So kind of confusing, but <laughs> we're figuring it out. So this parking situation is my biggest downside to diving Lauderdale by the sea. I have a little bit of parking anxiety, so partially there's that, but you want to make sure you get there early if you're going to get one of these parking spots that's like beach access. Otherwise, you're going to be driving around looking for street parking and then gearing up at your car and walking with all your gear on all the equipment you need from the car all the way to the beach, which is totally possible. Uh, not the end of the world, but just more cumbersome. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're gonna, we'll be out of here in a couple minutes. Sure. Yeah, okay. <laughs> all good. Thank you. Yeah, we're not, yeah. Turns out we got a parking spot. Oh, no! Okay, I'm gonna drop you down. You can see. It's just somewhere where it's not. Alright, I'm using this BC for the first time. They have their pouches a little different than. This is a great angle. <laughs> A little different than, um, like, a lot of the other brands do. It's like a zipper. And I kind of thought I was going to not like it, because it's not just like a simple pull-in, pull-out, but actually, I think this is easier. Also, it has kind of like this hard, rigid side, which I feel like slides in nicer. And actually, it was really easy. Okay. Oh, and there's little pouches right here. Cool. Here we go! I feel like sweating like I'm a really I know. Thank you. 
So Jillian was really set on diving underneath the pier and at this time of posting you can dive under the pier because it was damaged in the storms last year so it's closed um, so there's nobody up top able to fish off of it because that can be really dangerous obviously to get tangled and hooked on. So these tarpons start to swim by and Jillian is recording them but I kind of just hang tight because um, I'm thinking she's going to turn back around and we're going to head towards the pier. And she does turn back around, but she turns back around to make sure that I'm following her and sees that I'm not. And then comes back to me and is like, what are you doing? Why aren't you following me? And I was like, yeah, like we're going towards the pier this way. And she's like, no, pier's this way. So directionally, I'm not great. The most embarrassing part about this whole thing though is that we had literally just surfaced because the current and stuff was starting to pick up. So we just wanted to, to check in on, on what our location was. So we had just literally immediately descended and I had already gotten myself completely turned around to the opposite direction of the pier. But I quickly did find out why Jillian wanted to go under the pier so bad. Alright, so to wrap this up, I just want to go over a few points um, of things that I've kind of 
gathered from diving at Lauderdale by the Sea for the first time. So the first being what I already mentioned, and that is that the parking situation is, you know, I don't think that crazy uncommon for a shore dive. Like I'm sure there's plenty of dive sites around the world that have this public parking really bad parking situation. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. Make sure you get there nice and early if you want to ensure yourself a good parking spot. Um, the second thing I wanted to talk about is just kind of like how Lauderdale by the Sea is set up. So basically there's like three lines of coral um, going out from the shore. The part of the video at the very beginning where there's like all the fish and it looks like Little Mermaid uh, that was the first line of coral. The second line of coral towards the pier was where it got a little bit more barren. Now the beach stretches for a long, um, a long portion. So it's not to say that the coral, the second coral reef all the way across is going to be barren, but I found that like pretty much staying within the first line of coral was, would have been more than enough. Uh, the other thing that I want to talk about is the current. Uh, so when we got in, there was very little current happening. But as the dive went along, the current really picked up uh, quite significantly and got very tiring. If we would have planned this dive again, we would have started at the pier and then dove the other direction. So like walked down the beach, got in at the pier, and then dove down closer to our car because um, what we ended up doing was going out diving out towards the pier then needing to call it because the current was too rough getting out and then walking the beach all the way back up to where we parked which is not the end of the world it's a rough walk with all that gear on i would say plan the dive as if there is current that way if it does just pick up out of nowhere then you're already set for that so another thing that I learned on this dive that I picked up from just somebody on shore kind of watching out for conditions for when they were going to go do their dive and being someone who has done majority of my diving in fresh water, this is a, a little tip for me, uh, they were watching the, the buoys, those like cigarette buoys, the way they lean will tell them which way the current is going and how strong it is. So when the buoys are kind of straight up, um, then there's not like a ton of current. There can still be some, but not a ton. But when the buoys are like pulling all the way to the side, then you can tell that there's like current ripping underneath it. So that's a good tip for you to look for when you're going out to plan your dives. Like I said, there was no current. or I mean, there was very minimal current to begin with on our dive, but by the end of it, it was really ripping. Um, so watch out for that. But other than that, it was a pretty easy dive site. I thought it was really beautiful. Blue Heron Bridge is definitely like um, maybe a league above Lauderdale by the Sea, but I was really pleasantly surprised by what we saw. I feel like I don't hear people talk about Lauderdale by the Sea very much, or they kind of like brush it off their shoulder. But I mean, you guys saw the video, like that's a really cool dive. Like that was a really good, solid dive. Compared to Raja Ampat, I'm sure Lauderdale by the Sea is not a fraction as good. But um, I just, I behoove you to think more positively about your dives that you go and do. Maybe a little less, I don't want to say snot, I don't want to be like, say snobby but it does come across that way when people um talk poorly about all these different dive sites and are like oh visibility was only 20 feet like us freshwater divers and like lake quarry divers it just is like dude you like you don't understand how good you got it but also like i learned a lot about currents diving that day i got to see that like, I don't know. I just don't understand why people can't just enjoy a dive. Anyway, that's a whole tangent I don't need to go into. I thought it was great. I really enjoyed it. I hear much more about Blue Heron Bridge, but I think Lauderdale by the Sea is is worth your time. I thought it was good fun. So I hope that helped if you're interested in diving Lauderdale by the Sea, but also if you just enjoyed coming along, then I hope you enjoyed that too. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!